In this video, we're going to take a look at three kinds of goods, free goods, public goods, and private goods, and then talk about the free rider problem. So a free good is like an idea or air. If I breathe the air, it doesn't reduce the amount of air available to you. And if I use an idea, I come up with an idea and uh, share it with others, one person using the idea doesn't reduce the amount of the idea available to somebody else. So this is a free good, unlimited in supply, and you're not restricted from accessing it. A private good is something that needs to be purchased to be consumed. And after it's purchased, it reduces the ability of others to consume it. An example would be getting a haircut. Uh, if I get a haircut, I have to pay for it. And if I get a haircut from one specific barber, it reduces the ability of somebody else to get a haircut from that barber. Uh, the same works with fruits and vegetables. So I'll put the image here. If one person buys it, it reduces the amount of uh, fruits and vegetables that are available to other people. Then we have public goods. And this is also an idea of a good that is non-rival and non-excludable. So I want to go back to this image. Now, non-rival means simply that uh, if an individual consumes it, it doesn't reduce the amount available to others. And non-excludable means even if somebody does not pay for the good, they can access it. Now, let me talk about non-rival first here. On the highway, it's not perfectly non-rival, right? Because if everybody goes onto the highway, it does reduce the amount that's available to other people. But we could say, it's significantly non-rival. The likelihood of everybody being on the highway at the same time is pretty small. So while it's not perfectly non-rival, you could argue that it's kind of non-rival. The other one is non-excludable. And non-excludability gives a rise to the free rider problem. Non-excludability is something uh, like the, the US Army or the, the National Army for whatever country you're living in. If you're paying your taxes, some of that money is going to the government to use for defense. But if you don't pay taxes, you're also protected by the same army that is paid for by people who do pay their tax. So this is the free rider problem, a situation in which people who haven't paid for goods and services still benefit from them. Another example in the UK is the NHS. If somebody doesn't pay taxes, they don't directly fund the NHS, but they still benefit from it. So the free rider problem occurs generally with public goods because you're not able to exclude anyone who hasn't paid for it. You can't restrict access to national defense. You can't restrict access to the National Health Service in the UK. So people who don't pay for it can use it. And that's the free rider problem. You can even think about this in groups when you work in school, when you have projects that you have to do, and two of you are working really hard in this group of four, all the four of you share a grade, but two of you have done the work. That's also a free rider problem. Somebody benefits from the grade without having put in any effort. So you should know now what a free good is, a public good is, and a private good. And explain the underlying assumption or the, the concept of the free rider problem and how that ties to public goods.